All right, guys, Terry Doctor here, and today we've got another dev briefing, but this, this is a big one. It's the new roadmap for 2021 and update nine. So let's see what update nine has in store for us. So first off, we have the melee system coming in in update nine. And I thought they could have been putting this in update nine because when they teased the Russian uniform, they made sure to highlight the axe on the uniform. So maybe the axe is a melee weapon that's coming up. Also, they have teased us with a knife and a shovel. So we're at least getting two melee weapons in the game, possibly three, possibly even more. But what we don't know is how this melee system is actually going to work. Um, in my opinion, if you're hoping for something like in Beyond the Wire, where it's like a directional uh, melee system with directional blocking, I don't think we're going to get that. This game doesn't need an intricate melee system. What I think it's going to be is just you get your melee weapon out, you left click and you swing it and if you hit someone, they die. I don't even think we're going to get like a block button. It'd be nice to have that, but I don't see the point in having a block button for the melee system in Hell Let Loose. I really don't because it's really going to be a super last ditch effort or like a troll weapon or to just you know get some funny kills with. It's not going to be intricate at all. So I think it's going to be a simple get your weapon out, left click, kill and that's it. Next we have the server admin camera and I guess for 99% of the players of Hell Let Loose this is not going to affect them at all but for admins this is a godsend. Because when admins get reports of misbehaving players or cheaters they need to enter into the game the normal way like everyone else. You know, so if that server's full, they can't get into the game to see what's going on. Yes, they have external programs to see like a chat log and kill log, things like that. But now having an admin camera, I'm assuming that an admin's going to be able to get into the game now as you know an admin to check the game out and bypass any queues. That's something they definitely need to put in if they're not already thinking about that. But now an admin's going to be able to, you know, secretly sort of like fly around in you know, as like a ghost or whatever to find any players that are misbehaving or if there's reports of cheaters they can secretly watch that player that's been reported so that player doesn't know there's an admin stood next to them like recording them looking for potential hacks so this this is going to help spot and ban more cheaters so this is a good add to the game. Uh, next we have the fix for the weapon zeroing on all firearms so this has been known for a while that a lot of the weapons haven't been zeroed correctly, but they've never really said which weapons. They've just said that some of the weapons have been zeroed incorrectly. But now in update 9, we're getting correct zeroing for every single firearm. This is gonna, you know, this is gonna change things quite a bit. I'm not sure how much is gonna change. Um, I would say a lot of players have probably adapted to how the zeroing actually is now. So if you don't know what zeroing is, it's um if I'm gonna explain this correctly it's the range your weapon is sort of aiming for by default it'll be 100 meters so your bullet will travel and when it gets to the 100 meter mark it will then start to like drop down but if the weapons are zeroed for zero meters the bullets will start dropping as soon as they leave the barrel so i'm going to assume now that all the weapons will be zeroed for 100 meters a lot of players have asked for adjustable zeroing in the game so you can you know, change your zero in from 100 to 200 to 300 meters. So if you spot someone at 300 meters away, you'd adjust your zero in to 300 meters, put your iron sight or crosshair over them, click, and you, know, you won't have to adjust for any bullet drop at all. I think in Hell Let Loose, that would be a terrible addition, simply because of the ping system. Because what it would introduce is, you'd ping your range to, to wherever you spotted someone, quickly adjust your zero, click and they're dead without having to adjust for bullet drop. If the devs are thinking of adding in adjustable zero in, don't do it. Just do not do it. It's going to take out you know, a bit of player skill in the game. Don't do it. Next up we have the long awaited armor system rework. For me this is not really going to affect me. I don't play armor. I'm you know, infantry guy. I you know, love playing infantry in these sorts of games. Always have, always will but we'll go through the highlights of what this rework is going to be. So the machine gun belt size on the tanks is going to be increased to 200. The zeroing on the machine guns is going to be fixed like you know, the previous note. 
some sounds are going to be fixed. We're going to get better visual effects for when you get non-penetrating hits on armor. HE shell damage is going to be essentially fixed. So what's happening in the game right now is if you're hiding behind, uh, let's say, a very thin fence or like a fence post and the shell lands directly in front of that fence post, the explosion won't affect you because that, that small fence post, which could be extremely tiny, is blocking the damage. That's no longer going to happen. Also, it's, they've said they're buffing the HE shell damage radius, so so HE shells are going to be a lot more devastating and you're going to get a lot more kills now, I think, with tanks. Uh, next one up is they're reworking smart materials and geometry on all vehicles and vehicle viewports to increase visual fidelity and lower VRAM requirements. So basically, they're going to make tanks look better and it's going to maybe not improve performance, but it's going to take less to sort of rent less horsepower to render in the tanks. Fuel costs as well for tanks are going to be adjusted. They haven't said which tanks are going to be adjusted or if it's all of them. Hitboxes are changing on tanks. We're going to get collision adjustments. Penetration values and angles are getting updated. Armor values are getting updated. And tank handling and stability is also being updated. And we have even more for armor. The main gun alignment, the coaxial gun alignment is getting changed. They're looking into the vehicle physics. The handheld anti-tank like roll damage they're looking at the anti-tank gun damage and distribution so i'm wondering if they're looking at giving the bazookas and panzer shreks to more rolls i don't know if that's what they're doing they're looking at mine damage tank speed turret speed uh, switching your seats being you know adjusted expanding and balancing of vehicles so we're going to get new vehicles into the game reconsideration of vehicle componentry I'm not too clued up on what they mean by that, to be honest. Uh, repairing speed, rearming, tank commander loadouts, crewman loadouts, new vehicles, and ongoing fixes and adjustments for armor going forward. Next up, if you remember a few months ago now, I think it was, they put the call out to get your own voice into the game. If you submitted like death screams and being wounded sounds, you know, they've gone through all these sounds and now it looks like they finally picked out which voices from you guys in the community are actually going to get in the game and that's for the Americans and the Germans so it would be good if they announced when update 9 comes out whose voices are in the game because it's going to be good to look out for that I didn't submit any voices myself because you know I'm British and I can't do a good American or German accent if I was to do an American one it would be just yeah it would just sound horrendous and I you know I won't do that be on the video <laughs> I'll spare you that. But I do hope when they add in the Soviets and hopefully the British at some point in the future that they do another community voiceover you know, request because I'll definitely submit some for the British. Next up would be full implementation of the Steam achievements. You know, you should already have achievements unlocked by now depending on your ranks and your role ranks. Hopefully all the Steam achievements will actually work because there's pretty much all of them that don't work at the minute. There's simple ones like win around, lose around get a kill none of them work so hopefully with update 9 those will all start working and next there's more localization and like fixed localization so recently I know there's been a lot of uh, new Chinese players come into the game and I think that was uh, the result of a big Chinese streamer like streaming the game that's brought in a lot of a lot of players over there so it's just added language support for other regions and that is a good thing for the game because it means more players, more people playing Hell at Loose, that's going to get even more people interested once they see the player base increase. Um, one thing they just need to do is make sure there's server support for extra regions. So we're getting one new weapon with Update 9, which is the MG34, then yeah, I've already covered that before. You know, it's going to be the default German machine gunner loadout weapon going forward, and the MG42 will be unlocked at rank 4 three or five I can't quite remember but you're gonna be with the MG34 to start with and again additional loadouts they haven't said which roles are getting loadouts I know the German machine gunners getting one because of the MG34 um, but it'd be good to see what other roles get these new loadouts I'm really hoping that the medics get another loadout with like an SMG or just a different weapon next we're getting a warm-up staging period for warfare mode but they haven't given us any information on what that is. 
So what I believe this will be is, you know, I played a bit of squad recently and when you first get into a game when a map started, you have a couple of minutes just to stand around in spawn, chat to people, go over what plan you want to do, get your squad sorted out. So I think it's going to be that and that is a good thing. Hopefully this stage and time isn't too long. Hopefully this, you know, maybe like a minute or two so squads can form the commander can you know get orders out of telling which squads to go where to get nodes built stuff like that that's going to really help the beginning of games in hell let loose next we're getting an increased level cap i mean if you checked out the achievements you know you know this is coming currently the max level in game is 200 but the max rank for achievements is actually 500 so yeah probably expect that to be bumped up to 500. We're getting new sound improvements across the board. It's everything from the BAR to footsteps to death. Um, hopefully in update 9 when it comes out we'll get the notes to say what sounds have actually been improved. The UI is being changed as well, but don't know what. I mean at the moment the UI is just clean and quite minimal. So I wonder what they're going to change for that because I don't think anything needs to be changed. So we're getting the, you know, the usual bug and crash fixes and improved optimization across the board. They haven't given us really any specifics here, just that there's stuff being fixed. And stuff being fixed is good. Now this is a big fix, is the grass and foliage fix. So everyone must have noticed by now that when you spawn in the game, you'll just see the grass all popping up around you because it's not loaded in yet. What they've said now is that the grass will be a now near instant spawning. And this will be a significant upgrade to cover and concealment in the game. So that's good. Yeah, because I've spawned in outposts and garrisons that have been in that have been built in wheat fields before. I always do like a quick 360 when I spawn in, and I've seen enemies running through the, the wheat fields and I've just quickly gunned them down because it's not loaded in yet. So that's hopefully gonna fix this. So yeah, that's a really good fix. But also, also <laughs> This is another great fix. They've changed how the foliage video option setting works. So now if you were to go into like a just any area, change your setting from low to medium to high to epic, you'll notice different bits of grass popping up and popping out. There's like bushes that appear in medium that don't appear in epic, but ones that appear in epic that don't appear anywhere else. What they're doing now is changing that. So if someone's playing with foliage on low and someone's playing with foliage on epic, they're going to see the same stuff. That is huge. I mean, they've set by the same stuff. What the devs have said is it's no longer going to remove concealing bushes. So I think they just mean like the larger bushes are going to stay when you go into like low from epic. And what will probably get removed is just like the grass itself. But this is huge, really. It's huge. So I don't know, I might start playing with foliage on Epic. I'll do a little comparison video when update nine comes out. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Utah Beach is getting an offensive mode. And they've said for both German and US forces. So there's going to be a mode where you know the US start on the beach and have to fight their way up. But since they've said for Germans as well, I wonder if there's going to be an offensive mode where the Germans have to start on their side and fight the Americans back to the beach. They haven't done that before. It's always been one set sort of config. You know, the Germans on the attack and the Americans on the defense or the other way around. So it'd be good to see what they do here. And next up is all the weapons that are getting a visual quality overhaul. They have announced this before. Um, they have provided a couple of examples and basically what's going to happen is all the weapons are going to look better and it's going to take less horsepower to render them. So we're going to get increased performance. You know, it may not be a lot because it is just the weapons, but increased performance and better looking stuff is all good. And along with that is the weapons are going to be able to get like dirty now. So when you start crawling through mud, you'll get mud on your weapons. If you're playing on foil, you'll get snow on it and you can get blood on your weapons as well. So it's it's like a nice little touch that will bring this game up in quality and you know, give it a little bit more class. And next is an improved damage occlusion system. Now, I don't 
really know what that is. I mean, the word occlusion means to, like, block or close something. You know, to block something off. So, maybe they're looking at bullet penetration again? I, I don't know. If I When I get more information on that, I'll let you guys know. So garrisons are getting changed, it looks like in the warfare mode only. So garrisons will now be able to be placed in the first row or column of the red zone, or you know the enemy's area. Um, garrisons placed in this red zone will cost double supplies, so a cost of 100 supplies. And garrisons in the red zone will be disabled if there are any enemies within 100 meters of them. And they said they've done this to encourage conservative garrison placement. However, this is all being tested on the PTE, the public test environment, so these changes still could change. And the last thing we've got is some changes to the AA or anti liaison settings. I can never say that word right. Um, but what they've done, and this is this is something I thought they could do down the line. I've never done a video focusing purely on AA settings and the any file adjustments that have been going around. I'm currently using the any file adjustments myself and I was actually halfway through making a video comparing the four settings in the game against the, the any settings to see what's best, what's the best improvement, to see what's best, what performs the best, you know, what actually looks the best when trying to spot people in bushes and people moving around at range, stuff like that. But now the any files will be locked down, meaning that no one can change them. And this is my opinion very good because you can change uh, actually a hell of a lot with these any file adjustments and you know you can almost like break the game get unfair advantages you know exploit the game a bit as well you know, I don't know if you can remove foliage but there's there's a, I think a lot you can do so locking down the any files good thing and that means everyone's going to sort of be on like an even you know an even playing field and the last thing for update 9 is unfortunately no Soviet forces. They've been teasing the Soviets for for a while now, and because of these teasers, you know, I thought is a thought it was going to happen that they were going to come in update nine, but no. If you've been on the Hell Let Loose Discord, uh, you would already know this because the devs already said this, and it looks like that the Soviets will actually be released when the game leaves its early access stage. So it looks like it's going to be. You know, like a day one update, the Russians are going to go in. But we can see, you know, there's more things coming down the line. Yeah, more improvements to the armor systems, a campaign mode, which I think this is not a single player mode. But if you come from like Red Orchestra, Rising Storm, I think it's that campaign mode where you sort of choose. At the end of a map, you choose what area you want to attack next, and there's like a meta game around it about how many like supply points or reinforcement points you you and the other you and the other team get, and if you win, you lose some, and the other team gets some, and you know I think that's what the campaign mode is. We're getting flamethrowers, you know we already know this, but we just have no idea when it's coming, and we get our first confirmation of a Soviet map and it's Kursk. It's one of the maps that I thought was going to come and it's definitely come in and that's you know my opinion going to be a release date map for the Soviet forces. We're also getting an overhaul to Summary Demont. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if this is a full-on rework like Kirkland Forest or something more like they did with Utah where they did a bit of changes where they updated some control points, put extra cover around, stuff like that. And I think that's what they're going to do for Summary Dumont. It's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a full rework. I think it's going to be, you know, just like an update, really. And then here you know, we get, and we get continued work of just upgrades in the game, better visual effects, um, and continued implementation and expansion of Archon features. And Archon is what admins use to manage the servers, stuff like that. And three new maps are in development. That's confirmation. One Eastern Front map and we have a little tease of what this map could be. That It could be like a generic picture they've chosen there or it could be the map of, it, of the actual map itself. I don't know. And then two Western Front maps. So gotta keep our, keep our ears open see when these maps are going to come. 
and that's all for this video this uh death briefing video has been a bit longer than usual but we've just got a hell of a lot of information so if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe for more thank you for watching